Mr. President, I'm a teacher, uh, so I need to teach on this. And research shows, Mr. President, I'm a teacher, uh, so I need to teach on this. And research shows, and research shows, close your eyes and take a breath or two. Because bull- bullying is not the, because bullying is not the, bullies are just like you and me, just like you and me. Regard this like feeding the pigeons. Now, six other states are doing this. And there's a good reason why North Dakota is not doing it. And as soon as I throw the last breadcrumb out, mysteriously the pigeons go away. That's the issue. That's the issue. A little history on on bullying. On bullying. Close your eyes and take a breath or two. The aggression that we're talking about, and it's been part of our life for billions of years, billions of years, and it's a genetic program, genetic program that's been developing. As we look back from the history of our herd mentality, and if you've seen the movies of the Animal Planet, Animal Planet, you can see that that lion has that bully mentality, bully mentality in his look. So as we come few years later, millions of years later, there is a there is a society of people that perfected bullying. Now some people might think it was the Vikings and they they uh, took uh, took over England and they they you know were just uh, and the Romans have taken over countries, but. They did that to take country, take country. The Plains Indians are the society of people that developed bullying to its finest form, finest form. They had, they had ceremonies and feathers and everything, but everything that they had, they had ceremonies and feathers and everything. That, but if you stop and think about uh, a military private, it, that's over in Afghanistan, that he could go, and he could go to Osama bin Laden's cave and touch him or take something from him to know that he could take his dignity from him and come back. That's powerful. That's powerful. Experiencing difficulty and pain is essential for emotional growth. All truly resilient people have had experience with harsh life situations and learn how to overcome them. If we actually succeed in raising children who never experience any abuse or neglect, they would grow up to be emotional marshmallows. 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 Now I think, well I don't think. Now I think, well I don't think. How do I help victims? By holding them responsible for their problem. I reveal them the optical illusion optical illusion that is causing them to attract their tormentors but I don't stop there close your eyes and take a breath or two in this topsy-turvy social climate there actually is one instance when you can get away with blaming the victim and how do we do this well it's by calling your victim a bully but are the bullies shooting up the schools are the bullies going on not on violent rampages at their workplace no the bullies may be may not be saints, but the heinous acts of violence are all committed by people acting as victims. The horrible acts of violence that make the news are all actions of victims trying to pay back their bullies. Yet society is blaming bullies for these actions and not the victims. Which, by the way, means that you have to be very careful how you treat people. If you develop an image of a bully, someone can kill you, and society will declare it was your de- development and image of a bully. Someone can kill you. And, oh, whoops. Sorry. About that. We no longer blame the rape victims for the acts of rapists. Now, I can remember as as growing up and being around that when the rape stuff was coming around, everybody used to say, "Well, that girl." Senator. Tr- yes. Senator, pursuant to Rule 306. Senator has exceeded 10 minutes of debate in his first turn uh, on the measure. Further debate, Senator Mathern.